My name is Amanda Carr, and I'm a Water Quality Coordinator at Summit County Public Health. Today I'm going to talk about Summit County's Operation Permit Program for Septic Systems. I'm going to give an overview of our program, discuss septic system maintenance, types of operation permits, the requirements of operation permits, and some of our frequently asked questions. In 2015, the Ohio Department of Health required local health departments to issue operation permits to all homes that use a septic system. So this was a, a statewide regulation that required local health departments to develop an operation permit program for their county. In Summit County, we issue operation permits based on the system type, and each type of system is going to have specific requirements that must be completed during the term of the permit. The purpose of this program is to prevent premature septic system failures and protect the quality of the water in Ohio. The focus of the operation permit program is making sure that septic systems are being properly maintained. Properly maintained systems will help protect our drinking water and lessen the impact our wastewater has on the environment. Also, if you're not taking care of your system, you may have to deal with costly repairs or replacement. We want to make sure that these systems last as long as possible to avoid, avoid repairs or replacements from premature septic system failures. A big component of maintenance is having your septic tanks pumped. The tank should be pumped on an as-needed basis, and the frequency can depend on the size of the tanks, the number of people in the house, the strength of the waste, and the water usage. The state of Ohio does not require that tanks be pumped on an annual basis. We just want the tanks to be pumped as needed. Many homeowners are familiar with the need to pump their tanks and may already be routinely doing this. You may already have a contractor you're working with and may already be on a schedule, which is great. But maintaining a septic system is more than just pumping the tanks. The example that we like to use is comparing it to car maintenance. Everyone knows you need to get your oil changed. You're on a schedule based on how much you drive, type of oil you use, other factors. Um, getting your oil changed is a very important component of maintaining a car. But every once in a while, you have the entire car looked at. Someone looks at the engine, the transmission, the brakes. There are other components of your car that need to be maintained to prevent issues. And there are other components of your septic system that need to be inspected and maintained. Some systems have pumps, motors, UV lights, spray heads. These all need to be inspected and maintained to make sure that the system is working properly. The operation permit will identify your system type and will have a list of maintenance requirements for the components specific to your system. Here we have a list of the types of operation permits that Summit County issues. So again, we issue our permits based on the type of system. So each one of these bullet points is a different type of system and is gonna have different components, different, ma different maintenance requirements, and a different frequency of service just depending on what kind of system is on the property. So to give you a comparison, the first one listed the septic to leaching that's going to be a more traditional style system. On this operation permit, you might see a couple of um, maintenance requirements of things that need to be looked at. And the frequency of service is going to be that the system needs to be inspected once every other year. Comparing that to a spray irrigation system, on that operation permit, there's going to be a longer list of maintenance requirements there's more components, there's more things that need to be serviced, and for the frequency of service, that system is required to be serviced once every six months. So again, each one of these is gonna have a different operation permit, and there are gonna be um, some different requirements and different frequency of service, again, just depending on what type of system and what the components are. Here is an example of an operation permit. So this would be what you would receive in the mail. Um, at the top, it's going to say septic, septic type, and that is going to be, again, one of the categories listed on the previous slide. So this permit is for a spray irrigation system. Um, we're then going to quote uh, site, 
the um, the Ohio code and then also our local environmental health code uh, stating our requirements to have an operation permit program. Um, and then next it's going to say the permit term. So for this uh, for this system, the permit term is going to be January 1st of 21 through December 31st of 22. Lastly, we have the minimum permit requirements. So it says that this system uh, is required to be serviced two times per year. And each time it's serviced, it needs to include the following. And that's 1 through 10. And those are each of those maintenance requirements that the service provider is going to evaluate when they come out to do a maintenance inspection of your system. All right, now we're gonna go into some of our frequently asked questions. Uh, so what do I need to do? Well, the first thing you're gonna need to do is pay for the operation permit fee. Um, and then you're gonna wanna contact a registered service provider and ask for a maintenance inspection. So these inspections need to be completed during the permit term. So you might not need to call a company immediately. Uh, if you have a permit and it says uh, inspect the septic system once every other year, you just need to have it inspected once uh, within your permit term. So it may not need to be done immediately, um, but you will need to contact them at some point to have that inspection completed. The contractor that you have come out is going to do the inspection. They will fill out our paperwork and they will submit all of that to our office, so that's not anything that the homeowner needs to worry about. You're not responsible for completing that. And then with some specific systems, you may be required to maintain a service contract. So for our systems that have more technical treatment components, they do require more service and they do need to maintain an active service contract. So if your permit says MPDES, spray irrigation, drip distribution, or peat biofilter, we do require that those systems maintain a service contract. I don't understand what the maintenance requirements on my permit mean. So again, on that permit, under the maintenance requirements, there was a list of things that need to be evaluated, and those requirements are going to be different based on the type of system that you have. And that is a list of what the inspector is required to evaluate. So we do separate trainings with the inspectors. They are aware of what they need to look at. They, um, they will complete the paperwork. They submit that all to our office. Um, we have that list so the homeowner is aware of what needs to be looked at, but the responsibility for making sure that all of that's inspected and all of that documentation is submitted to our department uh, does fall on the service provider. So that isn't something that the homeowner needs to worry about. But if you do have specific questions about those maintenance requirements, you can feel free to contact our office. We are available to answer questions um, that you have about your system or any of those requirements. My permit says my system is unknown. What does that mean? So this means that our office has no record of the system that was installed. So you're gonna get a permit under septic type. It just says unknown. This is really common for older systems. Um, you know, when we go back, we don't always have great records of what was installed at the time. So under maintenance requirements for these systems, the only requirement is to have a contractor identify the system type. Since we issue operation permits based on the system type, and in these situations, we don't know what it is, we do want to make sure that that is um, evaluated and then we will update our records so that moving forward we're able to issue an operation permit um, that is customized to the system that's on your property. So what does the operation permit fee pay for? So like I said earlier this was a statewide regulation that started in 2015 uh, tasking local health departments to um, develop an operation permit program. And in those regulations, it did also have specific requirements for local health departments and what they were gonna be responsible for. So in Summit County, we have 33,000 septic systems. We're responsible for all of our administrative and IT costs for maintaining septic records and having public access to them. We review all inspection reports. So anytime someone is out to pump a tank, or to do a maintenance inspection, we receive all of that paperwork and we review them. 
And then additionally, we follow up on any non-compliant system. So if on those inspection reports there's an issue, our office will follow up to make sure that that's corrected. We also investigate complaints and failing systems. Um, so our office gets in hundreds of complaints a year. Uh, we do accept complaints anonymously. So if you notice an issue with your neighbor or in your community and you want to let us know about it, you can report those to us and we will follow up on them. Um, and then we are also responsible for having homeowner education and having information available about the septic systems. I already get my tanks pumped. Do I have to get them pumped more often? So not necessarily. The requirements of this permit aren't designed to increase how often you're pumping your tanks. This program is designed to make sure that all of the components of your system are evaluated, not just the septic tank. The maintenance inspection that's completed is what's going to determine if your tanks need to be pumped. So under that list of maintenance requirements on your operation permit, one of the first ones you'll see says check sludge levels. So the inspector will go out and measure how much sludge is at the bottom of the tank, which will determine whether or not you need to have that pumped. It's possible that through these inspections, you're going to find out that you're pumping your tanks too often. Do other health departments have operation permits? Yes, the regulation passed in 2015 is statewide. The programs may be structured slightly differently, but all health departments are required to issue permits. So each of these programs was developed locally by each individual health department. So again, we may see some differences as you move county to county, but all counties in Ohio are required to have an operation permit program. Can I inspect my own septic system? So there are certain traditional types of systems that may be able to be serviced by the homeowner. Systems that are composed of newer technical components require manufacturer certifications and may not allow homeowners to service their own system. So with some of our older systems, there is an opportunity for homeowners to become their own service provider. Uh, if you have a newer system, um, there can be some, some issues or some barriers trying to get those certifications, and it, it might be more difficult for you to be able to service your own system. But if this is something you're interested in, please contact our office, and we can give you some additional information and figure out uh, what the requirements would be for you. So lastly, please visit our website at scph.org backslash water quality. Um, we have more information about our operation permit program, as well as some of our other programs. Uh, you can reach us at 330-926-5600, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Um, and you can feel free to email us at wqcomments at scph.org.